the video number 2 – installation of the GPS model in the RCD510 Delphi monitors. This GPS model can be also used in other monitors, but we will talk about it later. First of all, I have already unscrewed the bolts on the monitor to save time of the video. So we have to unscrew four bolts which hold the CD changer. Here they are, one, two, three, four. Then you have to unscrew four bolts which hold the front trim plate. Here they are, one, two, three, four. The bolts were situated under our warranty labels. Plus you have to unscrew the bolt which holds the upper cover. So, I've already unscrewed everything. Remove the upper cover. Then carefully take out the CD changer. I hooked it and just pull it up. Be very careful because the CD changer is connected with the board by the flat cable. So, what we have here? Here is an FPC connector. Also, here are two latches which you have to unlock. To do this, just pull it up. I pulled this plastic latch up and it released the FPC cable. Next. As you can see, we have four more FPC cables, which connect front and rear part of the monitor. Hold the rear side and carefully push off the front side of the monitor. Then disconnect the two thicker FPC cables. Then, here we have a bit different mechanism of releasing the cable. Here you have to lift the plastic latch. Use your finger to do it. Here I lift it and the FPC cable has been released. Here the system is the same as with the cable of the CD changer. Carefully lift the plank, don't apply force. Then just pull the front side and remove it. Here it is. Carefully put it on the table. So, what we have here? We have such metal, how to say frame for mounting of the mainboard of this video interface and navigator. Here is our video interface, which transforms video signals plus here is the board of the navigation module. If you take a look on this side, here is a card reader which can be used for navigation. I mean we can use the card reader of the monitor itself to have quick access or to replace the card. We also can use the card reader on the module, but you won't have access to the card unless you dismantle the monitor. It's your choice. If we have USB socket to which any USB devices can be connected, we don't need the SD card reader. So, here we also have GPS antenna, adapter, which goes outside from our main board. Also, we have an additional cable which allows to detect pressing the OEM button. I mean, if you press and hold the OEM button, you will switch between the OEM image and navigation image. Also, we have mounting bolts. So, what do we need to do first? We have to unscrew this bolt which attaches the quad lock connected to the metal shield. You also have to slightly unscrew these two bolts.
Then install this metal frame. It fits well. Then slightly fasten it on the top to prevent it from falling. Then carefully press on it and screw it using the bolts which we have unscrewed before. Sometimes you won't succeed from the very first time. Then we'll do it on another side. I recommend using Zappan varnish here. It will help to prevent the bolts from unscrewing during vibrations. Oh, here it is. So, we have installed the metal frame. We can put the mainboard on the top of it. However, first of all you need to connect the flexible cable. As we remember, we had to pull up the plastic latch. I pull it so it's released and the FFC should easily connect. So we carefully plug it in, check if all pins are plugged. Hold the cable and carefully press this plastic latch with your finger. Don't use any additional tools for that. Don't use force or any tools. So. I've installed the main board. You need to fasten it. Use three bolts from the package. This main board is actually a video interface and navigation, first of all. Why is it a video interface? The main board, apart from the navigation, allows you to connect aftermarket rear view camera. We will talk about it a bit later. So, the main board is fastened. I also recommend to apply the pawn varnish to the places to avoid self-unscrewing. As I have already mentioned, we have a possibility to connect the aftermarket rear view camera. We have such harness. These connectors allow us to plug and play connect the camera without damaging any wires. Here we have AUX input wire, so you can connect any audio devices. Also, here is reverse wire for the camera connection. An activation wire. You should apply 12 volts to it to activate the camera. You should correctly set the deep switch's position. They are on the mainboard. Two deep switches which set the type of our monitor. It can be the one with the OEM input for the rear view camera or without it. And the type of the camera we will use. The OEM or the aftermarket camera. In our case, we need to set the deep switch number 1 in ON position, the monitor without the rear camera input. We don't have the master socket. The deep switch number 2 should also be in ON position, because we will connect the aftermarket rear view camera using the video interface. We will use this one. I mean, we adjusted everything and can resume the connection. 
As I have already mentioned, the package contains such wire which allows us to detect pressing the OEM button for switching modes. As you can see, I disconnected this FFC and here was the red wire on this side which marked the first connector. Take the additional FFC and connect it from this side. The red wire should go here, and this end we put here. Now let's connect all cables. As I've said, we can use the embedded SD card reader or external one. This narrow shiny FFC is in charge for that. It goes from the card reader of the monitor. In our case, we can connect it either back to the OEM socket or to the socket on the video interface. If you connect it to the video interface socket, you will use the card reader on the monitor for the purposes of the navigation mainboard. Let's connect everything. Here we have the FFC cable going from the monitor. It transmits control signals. Don't forget to lift the lashes. Check whether the FFC is entirely plugged in. Carefully press the plastic latch. The flex cables have been fastened. Now let's connect this cable. Carefully fasten the wires. Slightly latch the phone part. Then connect the card reader to the main board. Put the connector into the socket, then carefully press on the top and latch it. Everything is fastened, everything is connected. So, now take the antenna extension cable. It's a cable plus adapter. If you plug the connector directly, the cable can ring and signal received will be worse. Also, we have such harness. With such white connector on one end. Connect it to the same socket. Here are two white sockets, but they have different number of pins. You won't mistake. You will hear the click. Here we should carefully pull the wires. Here is such hole on the rear side. Put the wires there. Now I won't install the CD changer just to connect everything quickly and show how it works. Connect this end to the quad lock. Another end is actually the socket. You should plug here the connector which was originally plugged to the monitor. In our case we will connect it to power. That's it, everything's powered. You can see the diode is lightened on the GPS mainboard.
The display is also on and I can enter the monitor activation code. In our case, it's 1259. Here it is, 1259. As you can see, the OEM touchscreen works perfectly. I can switch various functions of the monitor. Enter media section. It's trying to find the CD changer. It can take some time because we didn't connect the CD changer. We are back to radio. So, as I have already mentioned, we will switch between the OEM image and the navigation using the OEM button. Here it is. Sound adjustment button. If you press and hold the button, you will switch to the image of our additional navigation. As you can see, the initial language is, let's say, not English. The image is slightly displaced, however, everything can be adjusted. Oh, the touchscreen doesn't work because of the SD card. Please note, when you launch this system for the first time, the memory card should be ejected. In this case, the touchscreen will be automatically calibrated. I will turn off the power and turn it on again. The memory card is ejected. I enter the code. Switch to the navigation menu. As you can see, the calibration procedure has been launched. Let's do the calibration. Plug in the memory card. As you can see, the screen works perfectly in the navigation menu. To make adjustment, go to the settings. Adjust the image. You can also switch to English. Install maps on this memory card. Specify the path to the navigation maps. Everything is standard as in all navigators. Let me tell you a few words about the functions. Sound from navigation mainboard is played by the driver speakers. I mean, when we have the general sound ground, for example, music is played, the GPS mainboard sends a signal to mute the sound from the audio system and navigation voice prompts are played with higher priority. Then there is a 5 second pause and the music playback is resumed. That's how the system works. That's pretty much everything what I wanted to tell you about the system. I try to answer the question you ask or can ask in future. If you still have questions, please visit our forum, send emails, we will answer. Goodbye, see you in the next video.